If only you could have Ivy Coffee, huh? either it's really bad allergies really quick I wanted to discuss my iron infusions and the side effects because what? Of the side effects of my iron oh. infusions because last week I showed in the vlog where I was getting an iron infusion but I did not elaborate on how it went the second time with that being said the second iron infusion at the end we did not flush the IV iron through quickly because the first time we had done that it triggered a mast cell reaction and I fainted and had neurological symptoms so we did not do that that time and it went much better but afterwards I did still have side effects but I do not believe they were mast cell related they seem to be more of the actual side effects from IV iron what had happened to me that time is I get a very strange taste in my mouth. I get muscle aches. I had a little bit of bone pain last time, but nothing significant. And then I was dizzy for about three hours. Although IV iron is typically more constipating for most people. For me, it was quite the opposite. So I had pretty severe diarrhea for a couple days. I would say that would be my most bothersome side effect, other than the dizziness. The first time I didn't, I wasn't really dizzy, I just kind of fainted. But last time I did not faint and I just stayed dizzy. So overall, the first time I think I felt better the next day. It was just immediate where I had the issues, whereas my second infusion, it wasn't immediate. It was hours later that I had the issue. For my third infusion, they doubled my dose. Instead of doing the smaller doses of 25 milligrams of IV venifer, I am doing 50 milligrams of the venifer. Ran over an hour and 15 minutes with a slow flush. And that is what I'm getting now. Kind of looks like coffee or some Diet Coke. If only you could have IV coffee, huh? So I am at David's Bridal. We did not make an appointment, so we're going to have to come back. But because I don't have enough energy to shop and then try on multiple dresses in a row, we are looking today, picking out what I might want to try on and then scheduling an appointment to try on a couple dresses at a time and then coming back frequently rather than doing it all at once. There's traffic as far as the eye can see. I think it's the right next exit. We're never going to make it to, to your appointment, Shy. Ain't this something. There's got to be another way. If We're going back to David's bridal today to try on the dresses that I had picked out on two days ago. This was supposedly our traffic jam here. Oh goodness. Some cars. It's these wet roads. And it's like an Easter egg hunt in here. Because the smallest size they have was a six. Think it, it looks right, I've got the clips. Okay. So, when this is not clipped up, it makes a nice heart shape in the back. It should be a little hard to see. This one's my favorite so far that I've tried on. What do you Are like you? about this one? I guess that's um, other than the boobs, the Easter yeah. egg haunt you said. Yes, yeah, so it's like an Easter egg. <laughs> what movie is that? 
has Sandra Bullock, but I can't think of it right now. So you could have some cups put in, and that would fill the, the, the cups out. Is there anything, well you said you weren't sure about the top here. Yeah. No, I don't know about the sleeves. Mm -hmm. and they're doing a little bit of a funky thing because they're a little big. Yeah, it'll, it'll look more, different with. More like a cap sleeve, really. It's kind of like not. Kind of like that. They're not really a full sleeve. It's just, just so big on you. That, but I guess that I like how it's not so much. Yeah, that other one's just going to be too heavy yeah. for you to walk around. Uh, this, this dress. Seriously, it's like one of the heaviest dresses that we have. I just want to get it out of my system. You want to okay. get it out of your system? You're certainly welcome to try it on. Okay, it's right. I'm trying to get this out of my system. It's a Vera Wayne, the heaviest dress. Uh, Giant. That's <laughs> <laughs> never going to happen. <laughs> It reminds me of my big gypsy wedding or something. <laughs> I don't even know that it's worth the while. You know that show? The... Yeah. It's yeah. like the my big fat American gypsy wedding. Yeah, yes. Cheyenne. I think the zipper is a little broken just okay. because so many people have tried to pull on it. Right? It's pretty, but it's not for you. No. And this is a zero, so you can okay. see that a zero fits better. I was thinking how much better this fits. It's still a little big, but so yeah. we don't bring smaller than a zero. Um, so, do you like the fluffy mm -hmm. skirt? I kind of do. It's not practical. <laughs> well, and this is this one's really heavy. If I the, can if, find you a dress that has a fluffy skirt. If there's a tamer one, mm -hmm. a tamer and lighter. I'd like to try on a, like a tamer. Yeah. You want to do that for the next uh -huh. one? Okay. And pink. And do you have one in pink? Mm-hmm. I do. That would be perfect. I do. That so, and then the the one that she really likes. Uh huh. I'd like to see that. Okay. Okay. We're I need you to help me. It's pulling really bad. It's not. I can feel it. When I'm trying to get my bag through the dress. Okay. I can't even. I actually like this one. A lot. Yeah, that's pretty. This is my favorite so far. Okay. I know I said that about the last one too, yeah. but this one I'm really... Hey, happy. I'm happy that you're liking stuff because... Oh, yes. There's literally been nothing that I've liked before this today. This is pretty. I like, I feel like this is flattering to you. Kind of gives you a little bit of shape and it's light and It covers flowy. your line up, which is going to make mm -hmm. you happy. And I don't want too scrawny. That's pretty. My hair is just wild from this weather. Yours probably the one of mine's looking like. This was the most successful wedding dress. Escapade. Yes, escapade. It's the time where I actually somewhat like all three of the dresses I tried on rather than hating every single one of them. I think I have a feel for what kind of style looks better on me now. Um, there's the one I really liked. I think it, everything I didn't like about it was because it doesn't fit because it was a size 6 and not a size 0. And I'm technically less than a 0 even. So we're going to try to find another shop that has that dress in the right size so that I can get a better picture of what it looks like when it actually fits me and it's tiring with that dress oh my gosh. yeah i needed to get the other big fluffy one out of my system i mean it's every girl's dream to try on one of those it would have um, never been my dream not in a million years not to doing this like three two three dresses at a time for each appointment and then bringing spanks spanks that i got covers up the tube because I I don't like my tube coming in contact with garments that haven't been washed. It just freaks me out. And I think that it's better not to have it in case like something were to leak on dresses too. That protects the dress and it protects me. And I get the spanks that go up right underneath my breasts so that I, it covers the entire tube. So that is my pro tip dress shopping as a tubey. If only that's all we had to yeah. worry about, you know? 
That would be wonderful. We had to feed the backpack in the... Yeah, for the infusions, we got the backpack stuck in that big Vera dress. Before I go shower, after I've just got back from David's bridal, I wanted to make a quick update about my iron infusion. Two weeks ago, give or take, I had my 50 milligrams. I did great during that infusion. I experienced dizziness like I have with my other two previous infusions, but I didn't faint that evening. I also did not get the severe diarrhea like I did with my second infusion. My side effects seemed to be very inconsistent. But as soon as I got home, I was good. I rested on the couch and that evening I spiked a temperature I had the chills, I had body aches, I, my skin hurt to touch, which is a manifestation that I get when I have infections. I was concerned that perhaps I had an infection and needed to go to the ER for blood cultures since I have a central line. But then I made the association that it could be because of the iron. So I waited it out some, and it was the iron. By the next morning, it had gone away, but with the temperature and the body aches and that whole thing, it was kind of rough with the higher dose because that did not happen when I had my 25 milligram doses. This was only with my 50 milligram dosing. Monday after I received my 50 milligram infusion, I had my labs, they ordered my iron panel along with my TPN labs to check and see what my levels were. And lo and behold, my ferritin was a 41. It has not been a 41 ever. It was previously 0 0.4, then we got it to be two when I was on tube feeds. And it's kind of just stayed that way until now with this iron infusion. My dietitian, who manages my TPN said that it can take two to three weeks for the iron to go past your iron stores and into your hemoglobin level. My hemoglobin level is still a nine. So I'm getting labs Monday, which would be two weeks after my other labs. And we're going to see if it has made it to my hemoglobin yet and to see if it is reflecting there. And if it is not, or if my hemoglobin is still kind of low, we are going to do another iron infusion at a 50 milligram dose and then go from there. I was just amazed and it's such a blessing that my ferritin is a 41 when it's usually zilch or close to it. That is amazing. I've not necessarily noticed many symptom improvements. My shortness of breath has been better, but other than that, I've not noticed changes. But my hemoglobin is still low. I'm still anemic. Just now I have iron stores. That's your body's reserve. I will keep y'all updated on my labs on Monday, and we will see if my hemoglobin has gone up. And then I might be getting another iron infusion. I might not. I took last week off of vlogging. I, my GI tract is really, really, really annoying. That's all I can say. I'm not even tolerating 10 mLs of J2 feeds at a rate of 3 mLs an hour. I've switched formulas this past week. I've tried different purees and... I'm just venting gunky brown out of my stomach coming up from my intestines and I've just been in extra pain and bloating. My manometry results did come back. Those were confirmed I had pelvic floor dysfunction, like whoop de doo we already all knew that. Shocker there. <laughs> Results said that I had dysenergic defecation type 2 with hypocompliance. I've not seen that doctor again to get his explanation on it. The do he was the doctor who was supposed to be ordering my, ordering my antroduodenal manometry who wanted me to eat a solid meal for the test. My local GI got in contact with him earlier this week and 
he refuses to accommodate for the test, so I will no longer be seeing him. There's nothing else he can do for me. I sent over my anorectal manometry results to the motility specialist like they wanted since they wanted this information. And because the antroduodenal manometry is a no-go, the other institutions is an eight-month wait list, they are taking the motility specialist that's out of state is going to be calling my the pathology lab to get the blocks from my subtotal colectomy where they removed most of my colon and sections of my small bowel. They are going to be using those pathology blocks from my colon and small bowel to do a full thickness biopsy and that is used to help determine whether chronic intestinal pseudo obstruction is my, a myopathy, a muscle problem, or neuropathy, a nerve problem. The manometry is supposed to get that same information too and to show exactly which parts of the GI tract are contracting, which aren't, which are coordinated. But because that is not currently possible right now, we are going to go with this first. And I'm praying it gives answers. And after that, then I will be they will come up with a plan. My local GI is very cooperative and and willing to work with whomever they need to, which is great that everyone can get on the same page. I really wish this other GI doctor who ordered my manometry was willing to be more of a team player and accommodating because even his dietitian said he's not touching my case with a 10 foot pole because it's just not possible to eat what he wants, but that's how things work out sometimes. But yeah, so that's what's where I've been for the last couple weeks, just really fighting with my GI tract. Story of my life. I haven't really been able to do much of anything other than when I've gotten out a little bit for these dress, short dress excursions. For my mental sanity, I needed to get out. Anyways, thanks for watching. I'll keep y'all updated.